Hello everyone. Greetings in the name of Jesus. I say blessed Sabbath to Leeds District, all our churches, Central, Beeston, New Generation and Leeds West, and even to those of you who are listening on YouTube or whatever media you are able to hear this message from. I mean, since the COVID-19 outbreak, certain words have become popular in our media. Every day we hear of epidemic, pandemic, isolation, quarantine, number of cases, death toll, toilet rolls, every day. It underscores the challenging times we are now living in. It even reminds us of how vulnerable our world has become. One virus has spread to every continent and has adversely affected, in some countries, almost every sector of society. Health, finance, education, entertainment, even sports have all become victims of COVID-19. The cost collectively to governments, businesses, families and individuals is astronomical. So far, there are over 276,000 cases that have been tested and over 11,000 deaths worldwide. I mean, this is so serious that the measures being taken by some governments reflect those taken in times of war. Some countries are on lockdown. We are indeed in a war, a global pandemic. Hence, there is fear and panic everywhere. We only need to visit the supermarkets and it's evident that individuals are panic buying. Shopping as if there is no tomorrow or as if tomorrow they will never have enough. Supermarkets are struggling to keep up with the demand. These times are unprecedented. To add insult to injury, places of worship Places where people go for encouragement and reassurance have also been closed. However, amidst the pessimistic atmosphere of gloom and doom, dread and fear, we can all be inspired by hope. Hope penetrates the dark clouds of gloom and doom and envisions a silver lining. Hope transforms pessimism into optimism. It has a way of turning fear into faith. The psalmist asks an important question in Psalms 33 verse 7. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? Rather, Psalms 39 verse 7. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? His response, my hope is in you. The world is waiting for this pandemic to be over. The sick are waiting for a vaccine, for a respirator, for a bed, for healing. Businesses are waiting for the financial assistance from the government to meet their shortfall. GCSE and A-level students are waiting to know what grades they will receive because their exams have been canceled. Football fans are waiting for the next whistle, for the next game to be kicked off. Christians are also waiting for churches to reopen. The psalmist is also waiting. However, as he waits, 
he hopes in the Lord. The object and basis of hope determines the strength and certainty of the act of hoping. Hope is more certain and confident when the basis is more secure. The stronger the hope is based on God's word. And that hope is based also in his faithfulness to his covenant promises. In Psalm 33 verse 18, he says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy. The good news is, God has not left us alone. While we expect governments and health professionals to do their task or their best to protect the public against this pandemic, our hope needs to be in the Lord. We may have some degree of confidence in these government officials, in health care professionals, trying to manage this very difficult situation, but our hope needs to rise above the weaknesses and infirmities of the human arm because the arm of flesh will fail us but the almighty everlasting arm of God never fails his eye is on those who fear him and he will have mercy on those who put their hopes in him we can hope in the Lord because he sees the end from the beginning this pandemic is not a surprise to God. We can hope in God because he is our deliverer. We can hope in God because he can supply all we need when our resources become scarce. We can hope in God because he is our protection. We can hope in God because he is our sanitizer. Not only from the coronavirus and other germs, but he can sanitize our lives from the virus of sin and evil. He is our present help in time of trouble. Some of you might have remembered in 2010, 33 miners from Chile were trapped 700 meters below the earth about five kilometers from the opening of their mine. For 69 days, they were literally on lockdown, locked away from sunlight, locked away from fresh air, locked away from adequate supply of food, locked away from their families. They were trapped, but not forgotten. These individuals, even though trapped, there were many, many people working to free them from this mine. There were separate drilling teams. Nearly every Chilean government ministry, the United States government, NASA Space Agency, and a dozen other corporations from around the world work together in completing this rescue. On the 13th of October, 2010, the men were winched to the surface one at a time in a specially built capsule. An estimated one billion people around the world watched as deliverance came from above. For 69 days, they hoped Finally, their hopes were realized. Deliverance came from above. I'm not sure how long this epidemic will last, but I am certain that our deliverance will come from above. Let us hope in the Lord. Our deliverance comes from him. He will have mercy on those who hope in him. My message today is hope in the Lord. 
he will sustain us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at this very difficult time for the country, at this very difficult time for individuals, families, businesses, and everyone, governments, and agencies, we plead for your mercy. We plead for your grace. We pray that you may protect us from this outbreak. And those that have been affected, Lord, please bring about healing, bring about comfort, bring about deliverance. And we pray that every day that passes, our hope in you will become stronger. Thank you for the deliverance which will come from above. Thank you for the hope we have in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God continue to bless you as you do what needs to be done to protect yourself and hope in the Lord.